if you look at the history origin of Loft Lab from early days, one of the problems that you folks have been talking about and working on solving is Kubernetes multi-tenancy. What are some of the big pain points you still see out there when it's come to multi-tenancy? Yeah, multi-tenancy is still a big, big topic. I think with the you know advent of AI and people bringing in GPUs into their uh, data center, uh, I think the, the, the big question really is, how do you do multi-tenancy on a large supercomputer effectively? And um, yeah, that that is a very challenging question. And since more and more workloads uh, shift over, uh, you know, maybe from traditional Slurm clusters to you know more of the Kubernetes cloud native world, um, that that question is a is a really big one. Um, so yeah, tenancy in general in Kubernetes, whether you know sometimes single tenancy is the right decision, but how do you run you know single tenant clusters effectively uh, is also a big. Uh, challenge, and I think that whole tenancy concept from you know completely separate single tenant clusters over hard multi tenancy all the way to soft multi tenancy in pre production and development. Um, I think most companies are going to have on this spectrum. They're going to have use cases, you know, pretty much across the entire spectrum, and it is really you know a big question of what tool you do you pick for each of these use cases and we're trying to you know as as v cluster we're trying to be a solution for variety and ideally the entire spectrum so you can you know have a single tool that can serve multiple use cases with different degrees of uh, isolation needs that you may have right in production you need stricter isolation maybe hard multi tenancy maybe even single tenancy um, in pre-production development, CI for your ephemeral clusters, maybe soft multi-tenancy is a is a viable approach. Maybe namespaces are even viable for certain scenarios. And we want to be, you know, as lightweight as a namespace in one configuration, as hard isolated in another configuration, and even in single tenant, uh, you know, applications, uh, we want to be, you know, a suitable solution for you. And how is your approach different from others? The way you solve these challenges, which also reflect on the kind of adoption you're seeing of vCluster. Yeah, I think we, we really started as a solution that you can adopt really, really quickly. So we started at the you know soft multi-tenant uh, side of the spectrum. It's really easy to set us up. You don't even need things like you know cluster API, for example, or any kind of central controller, which is the helm chart, right? Like to deploy a vCluster, you run Helm install, you run kubectl apply, Anybody who can create a you know stateful set of deployment and a service in a Kubernetes cluster can spin up a V cluster. That means if you just have an individual namespace, right, and your company does namespace as a service internally, you can deploy a V cluster and you know effectively it feels like you have your own cluster now. I think that's beautiful in terms of you know adoption and getting started, making it as easy as possible for you know a wide set of users to just get get their hands dirty with V cluster. But then, you know, as you dig deeper into the vCluster YAML and the different configuration options we have, uh, it gets a lot more advanced. You can configure vCluster, you know, in a much more hard multi-tenant and secure and isolated way. Uh, then we, you know, launched vNode earlier this year uh, to, you know, run on the node and create these virtual nodes for stricter isolation. And most recently, uh, we announced private nodes, which effectively allows you to join nodes directly into the vCluster control plane, effectively creating single tenant clusters, so completely isolated, completely separate CNI, completely separate CSI for each one of your clusters. And, uh, you know, that covers the entire spectrum. I think the, the attention we're getting in the CNCF ecosystem um, and, and the broader, uh, you know, tech community right now is really because we we are really easy to adopt and really easy to try out but then we also serve you know some of the most difficult use cases when it becomes uh you know critical to isolate workloads in production scenarios